Google's SEMA 2 is insane. It can understand and reason about commands in complex 3D environments, even ones it's never seen before. I'll be releasing a video on the five things I think you should know about SEMA 2, but I want to talk about one specific part of SEMA 2 that was tucked away at the end of the blog. It's this image on how SEMA 2 improves itself. Up until effectively ChatGPT, reinforcement learning, or RL, was viewed as something of a niche subject. Sure, there were some problems that were best solved with RL, but most of the problems were these toy problems that didn't really have any real-world applicability, or at least that was the general consensus. Remember, this is a time where fields like computer vision are seeing huge leaps and bounds thanks to the deep learning revolution and later the invention of the transformer. In contrast, reinforcement learning seemed to be stuck with this sort of academic treatment that didn't really pay any attention to how AI was actually applied in the real world. Of course, all of that changed with ChatGPT. The central differentiating factor of ChatGPT was its reinforcement learning through human feedback, or RLHF. This method trained the model to be good at interacting with humans and understanding their expectations. In reinforcement learning, a policy is effectively an algorithm that an agent uses to make decisions given information about its environment. OpenAI used human feedback to train a reward model for what's called proximal policy optimization, or PPO, which is a way to learn and optimize policy. RLHF via PPO was the secret ingredient that ended up creating what may very well be known in the future as one of the most important inventions of the 21st century. Now, if you think I'm rambling, stick with me because there is a point. Historically, having humans be involved in training is one of the primary bottlenecks that kills progress. We used to have humans hand label every single piece of data that went into training a model. And after AlexNet introduced the usage of GPT into training, Computation was much less of a bottleneck than data was. Having humans manually label enough data to keep training larger and larger models was simply not feasible. Self-supervised learning, or SSL, was a significant development in abating this problem. Rather than having humans manually label data, SSL allows you to just apply a ton of raw, unlabeled data to a training algorithm and have the model learn from that. Now, usually SSL had to be paired with fine-tuning for each task, but the trend was clear. We needed a way to remove human work from this loop. But why does this matter to SEMA2, and how does it relate to RLHF models like ChatGPT? Well, remember that human feedback was needed to train ChatGPT. While they could and did use SSL to learn general representations, RLHF required human feedback. This meant collecting large amounts of human preference data. But several years ago, Anthropic released a paper on what's called RLAIF, Reinforcement Learning from AI Feedback. The key insight was this. Instead of having humans supervise the reinforcement learning stage, we can have an AI do it. Anthropic essentially used an LLM to train an LLM. They still encoded human preferences by giving the supervising LLM a list of criteria by which to evaluate the training LLM. The difference now is they don't need a ton of human-generated data. They just supply this list of criteria to the supervising LLM. The results were impressive. The Anthropic RLAIF model achieved what's called a Pareto improvement over the RLHF counterpart, meaning that it's better on every front. It didn't have to sacrifice performance in one area to make gains in another area, at least in terms of the helpfulness-harmfulness trade-off, but that's out of the scope of this video. So why is all this relevant to SEMA2? Well, SEMA2 does something similar. DeepMind says in the SEMA2 blog that the model was trained with human demonstration videos. I was wondering how they determine the rewards for each of these videos. After all, determining that reward is the same central problem that RLHF faces with human feedback. If humans have to determine all of those rewards, we effectively get back to the same problem that we had in RLHF. While the details of the SEMA2 training have not been published, the figure that I showed at the beginning of this video tells us one important detail, that the reward model is a version of Gemini itself. That is, just how Anthropic's RLAIF model replaced a human feedback-based reward model with an AI-based one, so too does SEMA2. Since Google has already trained Gemini, which can accept both text and images and reason about its inputs. It can use Gemini to determine how well SEMA2 is performing in its game world given a specific task. So it seems Gemini is used to set a task as a human would. That task is given to the agent, which takes an action using game world controllers. This updates the game state, which then updates the observation of the game state, and a new task can be set. For each of these groups of task, action, and observation, Gemini is used to generate a reward for this group, again as a human would. And that entire tuplet of task, action, observation, and reward is inserted into the training data so that the next generation of SEMA2 can be trained and improved recursively in this bootstrap manner. So what does all this mean? AI is moving along at a breakneck pace, and SEMA2 is another point on this trajectory. Several advancements have been key in the development of AI including GPU-powered training, transformers, and self-supervised learning. AI-powered self-supervision has, I think, 
asserted itself as one of these key advances, with RLAIF setting the tone for technologies like SEMA2 to make incredible advances in just a few years. What do you think about SEMA2 and where do you see AI going next? Let us know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.